we are continuing with PV diagram. Wow! And we will also solve some thermodynamic cycles, which the IV loves to throw your way. Buckle up! An isothermal expansion. Something you may not see every day, but let's say I'm just sitting around in my house. And I've got a hot tub, and I decide to put a cylinder of compressed gas in my hot tub, as you do. And you then let it expand from a volume at A, which I made here, to a larger volume at B. But it's going to go really slowly. And so the hot tub's always going to be putting some energy. A gas will try to cool as it expands. But if you slowly do it so that the heat from the hot tub can enter it, then that temperature will remain constant. And that's why we call it an isotherm. Now the pressure will still drop. And you will end up with a curve like this. And we're going to call this our isothermal curve, where it goes to the larger volume, the pressure does drop, but it goes along this curve like so. Now we'll compare this to the next one. Now for adiabatic, as you can hopefully see here, this is a very fast process. Let's say we've got this same high pressure cylinder, and we're still going to let it go from A to B, but now we're just going to hold it down, and then wow, we're going to let it suddenly expand up to B quickly. Now, it'll still start at the same pressure and volume as before and at the same temperature, even. But as you let it go quickly and you can't put any heat into it, it will cool off. And so the final state over here will be at the same volume, but because its temperature has dropped, it can't be at the same pressure. So this is what we're going to call our adiabatic curve. And it is much faster, but you can tell that there's not as much work done by the gas. How can you tell that? I'm glad you asked. Because the work done is going to be the area underneath here. And there's less area for the adiabatic one and more for the isothermal. So this isothermal situation, which takes place overall at a higher average pressure, would do more work than the adiabatic one. The pistons and engines will always be going up and down, up and down through a cycle. And you need to do some reading on your own upon how those cycles happen. But I will help you solving some problems related to cycles. Take a minute and read this problem, which I blatantly stole from the IB, and see what you can do to solve it. Pause it. Give it a try. Part 1 of getting the temperature at point C is a trick question for suckers. Don't fall for it because they tell you it's an isothermal at 546 Kelvin, which means isotherm, the temperature does not change. So it is always a temperature of 546 Kelvin. That's it. That's your answer. Now the second one is a little bit trickier. Pause it. Set up an ideal or combination gas law. Because pressure remains constant, you take your combined gas law and, constant and cancel your pressures, you end up with, I think it's Charles's Law, and you've got these, pause it, plug in your numbers, and hopefully you found that you've got your 22 cubic meters, and your temperature, you've got the 546 over the 273. Turns out that this is a ratio of 2, so the volume does double to 44 cubic meters. Here are some other parts of the same question. Pause it. See what you can do. Now, part one is a sucker question. Don't be a sucker. Because they're asking for the work done from A up to B. And that's crazy. It's zero. Because there's no change in volume, and you can't have any work done if nothing moves around, if there is no uh, expansion or contraction of gas. Now, it says for part two, work done from C to A. Hopefully you realize that this was not trivial uh, and you have to know that it is pressure times delta V. Well your delta V change in volume is 44 to 22 so that's going to be a minus 22 cubic meters. It's going to decrease by that much and the pressure is at the constant of 101 kilopascals or 101,000 pascals. So that is going to be 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. 
times our negative 22, and that is going to give us a negative 22.2 times 10 to the fifth joules. That is our work done, which is negative. Keep that in mind. Now, pause it, see if you can solve these next two parts here. Part three, is it by the gas or on the gas? Whenever we squish and contract a gas, we say that we are doing work on it. So the answer is that it is on the gas. And that negative sign also tells us that. Then it wants to know the work done by the gas during one cycle. Now, during this cycle, from A to B, there's no work because it's a vertical line. There's no change in volume. From B to C, going this way, there is a lot of work done. And that is all this area underneath here. Now from C to A, that's negative work. And that is going to totally negate all of this work under here, leaving your answer as being whatever this area is right here. Now you need to find out first how much work is done from B to C. You do that using the first law of thermodynamics. Let me change this to delta Q equals delta U plus delta W from B to C. Now they tell you that's an isotherm. So there can be zero change in internal energy because there's no change in temperature. And they also tell you that you put in, I just covered it up, but you put in 31.5 times 10 to the fifth joules, positive. And so, boom, that is what your work is. And so you know if you do this much work, the 31.5, on your way to C, from C to A, you need the negative 22.2. Your answer is going to be 31.5 minus 22.2. And you end up with a total network, that's positive, because you have a positive area here, of 9.3 times 10 to the fifth joules of work. That is it. Good night, my friends.